I was really happy with him, in all honesty. First round pick, C.J. Henderson, I wasn't super happy about it. I feel like we could have went somewhere else and a bigger team, a bigger, a bigger uh, you know, position of need. But after watching uh, C.J. Henderson over again after the after the uh, initial selection, I was pretty happy with what I saw. Um, I'm not I'm not a big fan of drafting Florida prospects. There's a lot of Florida prospects that you know you know nationally don't work out. They don't work out at all. But watching C.J. Henderson reminds me a lot of Jalen Ramsey when he played for FSU, and I don't think he's going to live up to that like you know, like the height that Jalen Ramsey set the, the few years that he was here because arguably one of the best cornerbacks in the entire NFL mm-hmm. before he went to the Brands. I think he had like – he I feel like he actually did have a back injury. I feel like he might have played it off a little bit to not play. But there was obvious – you know, there was obvious difference from when, you know, Jalen Ramsey, you know, 2018, 2017 to, you know, 2019, 2020 season when it came, when he came with the Rams. So I, I saw a lot of uh, similarities with – C.J. Henderson, I was really big. I was really happy after a little while of thinking about it and pondering it. C.J. Henderson is a dog. He's going to lock up your number one receiver nine times out of ten. And I'm super excited to see what he does in training camp. Like I said, Florida prospects scare the hell out of me because the last Florida prospect that we took around that around that time, we already know his name, Dante Fowler, scares the hell out of me. you got to watch him in practice because – you can't have another scare like that. You can't have another Dante Fowler incident come to training camp. We need him. He's a you know number nine overall selection. I have to make sure that he stays on the field and produces. And you know we have to make sure Todd Wash puts him in positions to succeed. Because if he doesn't, he's not going to last very long. He needs the development of a good defensive coordinator, and I just don't think Todd Wash is that. So C.J. Henderson was the uh, ninth overall pick, the first of the Jaguars' first round picks, and I recorded my instant reaction. They were actually making the pick when I was on my way home from work and I had a similar reaction to you I was not very happy with it I thought that the Jaguars kind of came into the draft with you know a quite a bit of needs that they needed to fill and there were some number one best players available at those positions of needs as to where CJ Henderson was obviously the second best behind Akuda. now um, after you know reminiscing in it and sitting in it a while um, I came around to C.J. Henderson pick just like you. I think he, you know, the fact that he's the second best corner to Jeffrey Okuda, who Okuda is a excellent, excellent prospect. And, I you wanted him so bad. I wanted Okuda so freaking bad. Just watching him, he has literally – like his, those are the two prospects that, you know, really resonate with uh, Jalen Ramsey the most. They're both long, lanky, you know, quarterbacks with long arms, very fast. You know, they're not afraid to, you know, hit you hard. They're like, they're like safeties, but playing as a cornerback and with good zone awareness and good man awareness. Mm-hmm. Super solid prospects. I didn't view – I didn't really want C.J. Henderson. I was kind of looking for a wide receiver. I was thinking maybe C.J. Henderson might have fallen, but now looking back at it, I think that we got him at a really good, you know, selection. Wanted Jerry Judy at a number nine when he was still there. Wanted him really bad because just watching him, he's just so electric. But, you know, I'm not going to be mad about the C.J. Henderson pick. I really like him now. I think he's going to produce – So really looking forward to that. So going back to talking about how, you know, we initially fell after the selection of CJ Henderson and um, it wasn't just us, you know, you look all over Twitter and fans reactions to CJ Henderson pick and a lot of them did come around and it became kind of a topic of discussion. Why do you think that uh, fans were kind of brushing off the CJ Henderson pick? Like it wasn't a good pick. Personally, just because I think people look into mock drafts a lot and for like you, you hear people like doing the way too early mock drafts, like a week after the, you know, OTA start. And it's like, what are we going to do next year? Like, where, where are we going to pick and stuff like that? And I just remember, I think I remember I saw a couple um, mock drafts of CJ Henderson coming in the second or third round. And then all of a sudden after, you know, whenever, whenever he did his pro day and stuff like that, people were just like, okay, CJ Henderson got to be, you know, a top, a top 20, top 25 pick. And then we're picking him so early in the first round, we could have maybe gotten him in the second round. But now looking back on it, he allowed zero touchdown, or I think maybe one touchdown, and it wasn't even his fault. It was a, it was a, um, a mistake on the safety's part. When he was, I think it was cover three, cover two, something like that. And when, when in, that, in that cover two, the quarterback plays the bubble above, and the safety comes over the top to make sure they don't, that there's no top routes. And so that's basically what his route was. I think I could be wrong, but I think that's what it was, and it wasn't even his fault. So – theoretically allowed zero touchdowns against top SEC. No, you know what? It was in the LSU game. I think it was against either Justin, Jeff- uh, Justin Jefferson or um, Jamar Chase is when he let that touchdown up. I think, I think that was the game that I'm thinking of now. It was either, like I said, cover two, cover three. And I just remember, like, we beat him a little bit barely on, the, on that route. 
I, I don't remember the route, but I think that's why people don't like him. And now people are coming around and seeing like, okay, he's actually a lockdown cornerback. Like he will lock you now. And for the most part during that game, I remember him, like Joe Burrow was having problems. Joe Burrow and the LSU Tigers pretty much went through every single team that they went against by more than 20, 30 points. And coming to the Gators and, you know, like where they're at and with Kyle Trask and stuff like that, they, they scored on us. They scored on us big time. And the defense was shutting us down. That was like one of the only games the entire year we didn't score, you know, 50 points. Mm-hmm. So looking back at it, CJ Henderson looks like a really solid pick. It looks like a really solid prospect. And I'm, I'm actually really happy about it. But I think because of the mock drafts and people reading into that and actually doing their, you know, their homework on him is the reason why they think that he's going to bust. But I really think he's not. I don't think he's going to bust whatsoever. I think CJ Henderson is going to be a part of this team for the next 10 years. If, if we play the way we, we need to play and our coaches aren't like complete assholes, like freaking Tom Coughlin getting freaking Jalen Ramsey off the team, that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But if we do it right, I think C.J. Henderson is going to be a part of our long-term plans and be a building block for our defense.